Not sure how many people saw the last bonus mini review that I did, it was on the end of the video, so this time I thought I'd do it on the start of the video. Subject is the GMK gun mat. It comes in this rather snazzy bag with a pull string top. I've been using this one for uh, well, a couple of years now actually. It's a really good bit of kit. Unrolls. Got storage this end, it's upside down of course, for brushes, that sort of thing, you know, cleaning brushes. You've got storage space here for cleaning rods. There. Pull out, very good. And the joy of this surface is when you're stripping something down, it catches the bits that come flying out and go everywhere. Yeah, I mean, apart from looking pretty grubby now, really good bit of kit. Recommended. Right, let's move on to the subject of today's video, and that is the troublesome Stoiger. Magic of editing, here she is. Starting the strip down. Take it apart, take the spring out, take the piston out. Let's see what we're up against. Start by removing the optic. Pretty sure that's the right size Allen key. Hex key, whatever you want to call it. Oh, they're quite tight. I didn't put this on. Oh, I bet this is going to be a... Oh, no, not too bad. Excuse the heavy breathing, I've just got back from a three mile walk. I say walk, I uh, kept the pace up because you've got to do that to keep your back moving because otherwise you end up in pain. There we go. Oh, okay. I hate that. There's a stud there and it's not been wound in. Sorry, wound down even to hold it in place. Okay, I'll have to fix that. It's there, use it. Put that to one side. Now, let's take apart the actual gun. Three screws, one here, one here, one here. From memory, I can't use my toolkit, so there we go. I know I look awkward, I'm trying to reach around the phone while I'm doing this. You all would laugh if you saw how it's all laid out. There we go. Put your mint condition stock to one side. I say mint condition, grubby as hell. Stock to one side. Starting the fun part. Okay. Right, okay. Okay, I'm going to start by taking this little E-clip off. Try not to lose them. I'm using a punch on this initial go, but what I may end up doing, yep, switch to a little screwdriver. Not that one. Not that one. Hmm, who's been moving my screwdrivers? I suspect Mrs. V's been in here. I hope you're not just getting an extreme close-up of my grubby head. There we go. Oops. Okay, what have we got? Now usually what I like to do is give someone else's video a quick shout out at this sort of point, but I must confess I couldn't actually find anything really definitive on doing this. The only video I could find, the spring had already been removed, so that's just cheating. 
Oops. Okay, there's another little lead clip there. And let's remove the safety catch. Okay. You've got to make sure when you refit it that you hook it in under that spring. So this piece here, you've got it like that, lift, and there we go, off it comes. Brilliant. Just look and see whether this little cover at the back here just pops out. Pops out, they usually do. But not on this occasion, that needs to come out later. Well that sound is my neighbour from across the way who thinks it's hilarious to park a tractor across my driveway. Bless them. Well, whatever turns people on. I find it hilarious to not annoy people. But, you know what? Presumably that's to attract my attention to the fact that they've just blocked my driveway. Right, after getting it to that point, I'm going to take the barrel off. I must confess, normally I wouldn't, but with this plastic shroud on there, I'm a bit worried about damaging that during the removal process. So. Fun, fun, fun continues. Okay. There we go. Just unhook mechanism from there. It's very dry this gun. Very, very dry. Okay, we end up with this. Looks like a 10 millimeter. And the 10 millimeter has not been subject to, to a fridge suck, which is good. There we go. Hmm, that felt like it had been forced in. I wonder if this has been a part before. Okay. There's still evidence of thread lock. Not a change position here. You can see I've got the uh, cylinder of the air rifle fixed in the what well what Mark Novak would call a universal work holding system. A vice. Got to get this pin out. So how are we going to do that? Well, ordinarily on these guns, I'd use a clamp. I'd put pressure on it, i then safely relieve this pin and uh, get it out, but uh, um, it's loose. I don't think there's much preload on this. So, well, let's have a look, shall we? Oh Christ, yeah. The, there's nothing holding this in. Wow, okay. Yeah, even Puny here with Punch managed to do it. Um, I, I suspect this might be broken. This p trigger come out now. There's a spring. Wow, okay. Well, it, it's short. Oh, God. The the ends are yeah they they're not they haven't really been finished um, they're just round and well you can see yeah uh, well that isn't going to help consistency or power all right well that was interesting quite a nifty little uh, spring guide there quite good just so you know. This plastic cover at the end, this is actually integral 
here see it's got the holes there it's not just going to pull off so you have to take that off with the spring guide so yeah don't don't be trying to leave it off or anything because it's it's not going to come it has to come off as one piece uh, right what I'm going to say is refer to my previous video on the BSA Lightning for how to safely remove a spring using spring compressor or in my case whacking great clamp um, but on this occasion I didn't need it I've done very well in, up until now, not had a swig of tea. Mini review number two, Stanley insulated mugs. Brilliant. Love mine. Had it years, and I mean like years. Still keeps tea nice and warm, still tastes like tea, not sort of plastic junk. So yeah, cheers. Let's get the piston out. You got the slot there. A cocking system. Oh, by the way, I'm using terms like this because I don't want to use technical terms and people go, what the hell is he talking about? Get something that's suitable. Don't get something with sharp edges. Don't use a screwdriver because you can chew up the edges and just guide the piston out. There we go. You may find so Oh. <laughs> oh dear. That's, that's buggered. Well and truly. Yeah, it it's like rusty, mouldy. Um, well, I think that could well be why it's not producing much power. Got top hat here as well. Piston weight. Piston weight. I've seen some comments about removing them to increase feet per second, and yet some tuning companies offer a piston weight to increase feet per second. So have some uh, have some discussion in the comments about it. I'm, I'm interested. Really, I'm interested. There we go. That's on the floor. There we go. little piston weight, which I assume was factory. Looks like it. Oh, there's a buffer in there. Down in the bottom. Right. Well, I think piston seal is going to have to be ordered. And I might just go through my springs. Yona doesn't want to spend any money on it. I might just go through the springs I've already got and see if I've got something suitable to replace that. Oh, that this end's been ground. Not amazingly, but, you know, a bit. Well, it's not the, most, not the best spring in the world, but it's not in bad condition. But, yeah, I think that might just be why it's not producing much power, because that looks knackered. Well and truly. Right, joy joy, clean up time. Anybody who's wanting to do the job all in one go, refitting is a reversal of removal. Just make sure, as I say, that you use a spring compressor of some sort because I can't guarantee if you're fitting a new spring that it's all gonna go back together nicely without you needing to put any effort in. Just see how the uh, piston seal comes off. See as this one's buggered, I'm not too worried about messing it up. Looks like it's conical type. I hate trying to get these off. Okay. Yeah, I do not like these at all. Ideally, pop the piston in a vise and hold it. Don't hold it in your hands because you may slip and stab yourself. Basically, have to destroy them to remove them. Which is never good. Here we go, it's coming. It doesn't want to. There we go. If you do chew up any of the edges, just like run your finger around it, check for burrs. Obviously if it looks sharp, don't run your finger around it, don't cut yourself. But yeah, if there are any burrs, get a little second cut file out, just clean it up. It'll make it so much easier to fit the new seal and it'll last longer. But, yeah. Ah, there we go. Yeah, I'd say that would reach the end of its life. Great. I love giving myself work to do. Before you put it all back together, just worth cleaning up some of the burrs inside here. There are a few rough edges. I can just feel them with my fingers. So, 
Remember, as you push the piston seal in, they're going to catch on those rough edges and it's going to tear it. Only light marks, but light marks create wear points, create leaks, create loss of power and inconsistency. So it's worth spending a bit of time before you pop it back together to just clean all that all up and get it looking nice, get it feeling nice, and it'll work a bit better. Well, as well as it can do anyway. Obviously at this point in the proceedings, if you're not going any further, if you're not rebuilding, gather together all your parts. Might be worth keeping hold of your old piston seal just to check the new one is definitely right. Gather them together, stick them in something safe. I use old Chinese cartons so I then label up with what they are. Obviously it has to be a big one for the spring, that's going to have to go somewhere else. And yeah, I will see you later.